Hi guys and girls, it's Michael with A Better DJ and Photographer. We're going to do an unboxing and a setup of the RCF J8 array system. And we're going to focus on using it to DJ. There's been lots of uh, demos out there of the sound, which is amazing. But there hasn't been much discussion of actually using it for DJing. So... I'm going to discuss that well once we have it broken out and uh, explain that. First, I want to give you a little background. We've been in business since 1999, and uh, we've done over 16,000 weddings and events. Next year, we will do our 15,000th wedding. I personally have done somewhere between 2,500 and 3,000 weddings and events. And we have over 4,000 DJs, photographers, and videographers that are part of our network. And we specialize in budget weddings. Now, just because we specialize in budget weddings, it doesn't mean we use budget equipment. As a matter of fact, I've proud myself all these years on using strictly top-of-the-line DJ equipment. Uh, before we all went digital, back in the CD days, I was running a pair of QSC amps and a pair of JBL Double 15 2,000 watt speakers and I could blast with the best of them. Once uh, digital and powered speakers came out I became a total QSC man and my current system until I unbox these and burn them in is a pair of QSC K12 2's, a pair of K8 2's and a pair of KS112 subs and I mix and match as need be for the venue that I'm doing uh, that being said, we just returned from a 5,000-mile road trip doing five weddings and a celebration of life in different parts of the country. Uh, we went as far as from upstate New York to Peck Atonica, Illinois, which is just south of Wisconsin. We finished up in Lexington, Virginia with a wedding on Friday and Saturday and just got home today, and my new RCS speakers were here waiting for me. You might say to yourself, if I got all that great QSC equipment, why am I switching to this RCF equipment? And some of you may not be familiar with RCF. RCF makes concert speakers. If you've been to concerts and festivals, you've probably been to one that had RCF sound. They pride themselves on being able to basically turn it up all the way with no distortion. The reason I'm switching is because of our traveling and doing a lot of weddings, we have limited space for our system. And this system, as you soon will see, contains a subwoofer and an eight speaker array that sits on top of it. And when I was lucky enough to do my head to head test against my K12 II, this speaker absolutely blew it away. And I think it will hold its own against the KS112 sub with a K8 II sitting on top of a pole on top of it. So now I'm going to have a much smaller unit putting out as much or better sound and it's a whole lot easier to move around and takes up less space in the car than a couple subwoofers and a couple of speakers in bags. It took me a while to get to uh, be able to test this because I could not find a retailer that had the K12 II and the RCF in stock and originally I was out looking for the JBL PRX1. This speaker beat the PRX-1 in a head-to-head -head test as well. So a little bit about the J-8. It's just simply a speaker, a pole, and a subwoofer. There's no mixer on it. If you don't already have a great mixer, one of the two speakers you should buy is called a J-Mix 8. It has a wonderful mixer built into it. I've already got great mixer, so I didn't need it. So let's move on to opening up the box. We'll show you what's in it how it goes together, and uh, you guys can uh, go online and, and find the sound tests all you want, but right now we're just going to do the box, and we're going to do the setup. So a quick look at the box. It came in from our friends at Pro Audio Star. Very well protected. All the corners were protected. I've seen some bad reviews, people putting in, about their units being damaged when they arrived. Folks, don't give a bad review on a product because the shipping was bad. Get yourself a replacement, test the product, then put in your review. That's just simple logic. I hate to see 
something, something's got a 4.5 star review when the product itself has a 5 star review across the board and there's a couple of bad reviews on there because the product was damaged in shipping. So with that being said, let's move on. staples in here, so we're going to go ahead and pull the staples. These are packed really good. Okay, I highly suggest get a pair of pliers, pull these staples out before you go any further, otherwise you'll be cutting yourself up with the staples. No fun, it hurts, makes you bleed, and you have to stop doing your setup. staples. Okay, so on the top of the speaker, we have a nice thick piece of cardboard. There you go. Itself, the subwoofer is in a plastic bag. So we're going to open up the bag and slide the box off, and I'll take the sub out of the box. As you can see, I'm holding it nice and easy. You can hold this sub with one hand. You put it back up on the stand for you. And there you go. Now, on the back of the sub, Band it in here nicely is the array speaker, which also came in a bag. Probably weighs about, feels like about maybe five pounds. We have this great sign you can put on a speaker pole. Promotes your your speaker. If you uh, want to sell them or you're at a trade show and you want to kind of brag about what great equipment you have. And we have this other little skinny box here. That's got the sub pole in it. Now this part here is quite interesting. There's a lot of videos out there that show setup time of array systems from different manufacturers. And they show the J8 taking longer to set up because of a feature this sub pole has. Many of the uh, array type speakers, there's a hole in the top, you stick a column in it, you put another column on top of it. The downside with that type of speaker, first of all, you have a plastic shape going into a plastic hole with some metal connectors on it. Eventually those are most likely going to wear out on you. Not a good thing. The other thing is some of these speakers that the different manufacturers have, the speakers start right here and go up to six, seven feet. When people are dancing in front of your speaker, like here, and this would have been on the ground, they're blocking the sound coming out of all of the lower speakers. So what RCF did was they made a two-part speaker pole. And the reason they did it in two parts, you'll see there's threaded here and it's threaded there, is so that if you're on a stage, you could just use one of the two parts of the speaker pole. Now what's unfair in the setup that you'll see from 
different people comparing the setup of this against Bose or the LD unit or even the PRX1, the thing you're going to see is that it takes longer to set this up because you have to put the pole together. So it adds like an extra 30 seconds. Well, here's, here's the thing to really think about, guys and girls. How often do you have, if you're a DJ, your system on a stage? It's not really that often. So, we have the option of keeping the pole together. And this pole assembled is only an inch longer than my other sub poles that I use with the KS112 and the K82. So, I have a bag that I bought right over here. This is a camera uh, tripod bag. And I put my sub poles in it. So, this assembled pole, oh, well, you know, it fits. So, I will be keeping the poles assembled unless I need to take them apart. Makes sense. Okay, so we're going to set the pole right there. Okay, there's also a bag with a manual. Make sure you register your product so you get your warranty. There's also a uh, RCF key tag in there. And here's our power cord. It also comes with three clips to go on the pole so you can clip the uh, speak on cable directly to the pole. I'm going to go a step farther with mine and put some uh, uh, cable ties on it. And I'm going to leave my speak on on the pole. So when I set up, I don't have to do anything with it. All I have to do is plug it in and put it up on top of the, uh, the pole, and it's good to go. So these just slide on the pole, nice and easy. And like I said, there's three of them. Make sure that's not going to roll on the floor. There we go. All right, so... Let's say you arrived at your venue, you did the same thing as me. You got your pole already set up, your clips are already on it. You got your subwoofer here ready to go. You've already taken the speaker out the back. So all you have to do is put your pole on. I'm going to take this off the stool now so you can see what it looks like a little better. Okay. And then you take your speaker, which again is like five pounds. You put it up on the hook. We better expand the pole a little bit. This is a flexible, just like any other sub pole. It can go up to uh, any height you want, up to looks like about six and a half feet. All right, so I'm going to just take it up to the fourth hole. By the way, if you pull this out all the way, there's a, a plastic piece in there that's used to keep it tight. That will come loose. Just patiently put it back in. You'll be good to go. All right, so now we're going to put our little five-pound speaker on the top. There we go. It clicks right down in place. And look at this. It turns. Unlike the ones that are all fixed columns coming up, you can turn this. So you can broadcast it in the area that you want to. So you have a speak on cable, plugs into the back of the speaker. And my advice, whenever you buy new gear, buy your backups right away. Get your backup speak on cables, get your backup power cables, get everything that you need right off the bat. You won't have to worry about it later and always have those with you because you never know when something's going to happen to one of your cables. And at a wedding or an event, you don't get a second chance. All right, so we have it there. And I don't know if you can see here or not. There's a plug right there for it. And at the height that I've got it, there's only a little bit of slack. I'm going to go over the handle and then pop it in the hole. The nice thing I like about speed guns is when you put it in, and you turn it, it locks in place. And you get a nice positive click on it. 
Okay, so there's the back of the unit. That's where the speaker was. Here's where your power cord goes down here. You have volume control right here. You have a line or mic button there, and you have down here, and you have a boost or a regular button there. You probably don't need the boost if you've got a, uh, a good mixer. You can boost it that way. That's what I would prefer. Okay, so I'm going to turn it around for you. And there's your finished setup. I'm going to bring my cable around to the back. And there you go. Beautiful, nice, clean setup. And there's your little array with eight speakers in it. Now this is 128 dBs. That's the same thing that the KS-112 puts out. And it's the same thing that the uh, uh, K-82s put out. So in a much smaller unit, I have the entire system ready to go. And one of the nice things about it, again, is the weight. I'm going to move this back a little so you can get a better idea on the whole system here. There we go. Okay, so the weight is so minimal that you can walk up and do this. Put your hand on the pole, grab the handle on this, whoops. Okay, so you can put your hand on the pole and the handle on the sub. pick this up and move it as need be. You can pick it up and walk across the room with it. Again, 128 dBs of sound. That's a lot. You'll never use that much at a wedding. If you do, people's ears will be bleeding. So that's what it looks like set up. I'm going to stop the video for a second and I'm going to splice in one that I have already set up with extra cable ties and stuff on it. So hold tight with me. Okay, so I'm back. So here is the first one I opened up. This is the sub going up the pole. Here's my eight speaker array. And if you'll look here, what I've done is I've actually put cable ties there, there, and there to keep my speak on cable on the pole. And you see how nice it plugs in right there and right down there. I don't have any extra slack showing anywhere. This is what I see from the back of the unit. Okay, and this is what my client sees from the front of the unit. I'm going to turn it around so I can get enough. Okay, so this is what my client sees from the front of the unit. Okay, so you can see there that it's very, very clean setup, and I like clean setups. So once again, we're talking about the J8 by RCF, or the Evox J8, as it's also known as, as you can see on the box. I got mine from my friends at Pro Audio Star. They shipped it the day I asked them to, so that it would be here when I got home from my trip. They did a great job on that. It looks really good. And I'm about ready to hook them up and burn them up for a burn them in for a couple days so that when I get out there to do my first wedding on the weekend with it, it's all set up and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cable ties on here. I'm going to stick a few more gravity clips on there, have my cable nice and tight so they look the same. Thank you all for taking the time with me. Be sure and check out the sound comparisons oh, one on one other YouTube. time saver I wanted to show you guys. Sorry for the delay. From our friends at Fitz, that's P-H-I-T-Z. This is a cable bag. It's absolutely awesome. It holds in this long front pocket. I have my power strip, surge protector, and a long cord on it. I think I have about 20 feet on it. Inside here, all your cables store vertically. And I also have in here my microphones, my tambourine, my base unit for my wireless microphone. I have two mics in here, a wireless and a wired. I already have set up from my KS, uh, K12-2s. I've got a 15-foot power cord uh, onto the regular cord, and I have a quarter-inch to quarter-inch. 
have a pair of those in there, won't need them anymore. And I, of course I have a backup uh, power cord. I keep backups to everything in the bag. So when I get to a venue, I'm bringing in my two speakers, my cable bag, and I have a hard case over here. That inside is two laptops, two hard drives, two power packs, a couple of mice, and a mouse pad. So that's what I walk into a venue with. Everything I need is in there as far as a laptop. Everything I need in there as far as wires is ready to go. And we're going to have our two RCF J8s. Thanks again for watching.